Hello Stampers, Kelly Atchison at Stampabug.com coming to you from the Nashua, Wisconsin. Today I'm going to be sharing some beautiful cards that I made using the Humming Along Bundle, which includes the stamp set and the Hummingbird Framelits. Now this is part of the Creative Inking Blog Hop for April, and our theme is Spring is in the Air, and I thought, oh, what tells me spring is right here? better than hummingbirds and flowers. I don't know, I'm sure there's a few things, but I felt like this stamp set and matching dies was the perfect combo to make some spring cards. I'm gonna be showing you some water coloring techniques, and I think they're perfect for this big, beautiful flower and also this gorgeous little hummingbird. So, let's get started, and I'll show you exactly how I did it. The first thing I wanted to bring in is my Stamparatus. Now, there are many different reasons why I use the Stamparatus. Mostly it's for perfect placement, but today I'm using it for multiple stamping. And what exactly do I mean by that? Well, I find that when I use watercolor paper, it is a very thick, porous paper, and it has to be to take all that water and do all those fun things you can do with it. But one of the things that I usually have problems with is when I stamp on watercolor paper, my image doesn't stamp completely. I'm using Stays On ink, which is a very fast drying ink, and I need to stamp multiple times to get that good, crisp black image. So the Stamparatus is the perfect tool to make stamping on watercolor paper successful. And I'm sure if you've used watercolor paper before, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So I am going to just set an ink pad. Oops, let me move some stuff out of the way here. Down here, this is a good little tip to put an ink pad or a stamp set underneath your plate when you flip it over. So when you're inking this up, it gives you a good flat platform versus your plate being going, um, going in a downward slope. So stamp set or an ink pad will work good for that. Now I've just got a great big piece of um, watercolor paper and I'm going to take my magnets off. Make sure you're keeping your magnets away from each other because if you don't, they can slap together and they can break and they still work obviously, but I did break mine. That was a genius moment. And I'm going to add my magnets here. I've just slipped my paper in. You'll also notice that I do not have the pad that's usually in here. And that's because I'm using red rubber stamps, these red rubber stamps. I wonder if you can even see what I just did here with that ink pad. I was just thinking I might be getting out of my camera. But I've got the red rubber ink pads which have the, or the red rubber stamps which have the foam in them. So they're a little thicker. You don't need to use this pad for those. All right. So I am going to use my stays on ink. You always want to use a waterproof ink when you're doing any type of watercolor techniques. And we're going to ink up the flower and also the hummingbird. And close that and give it nice hard pressure. Okay, and then I want to show you what I'm talking about. Do you see how faint this is? Some of the flower on the inside here isn't stamped. Um, the image isn't real crisp and clear. Same thing with my hummingbird. This is why I like to use the Stamparatus to stamp multiple times when I'm using watercolor paper because I can keep that paper right in place and I can stamp again and even again if I need to. Oh, and that looks really nice. Okay, remember to take those, keep those magnets apart. Close your stays on ink up right away. You can't leave this laying out on your desk open because your pad will dry up. All right, so I wanted to show you first how I watercolored my images because there's kind of a neat little technique involved with that. And I've got blueberry bushel, pineapple punch, and smoky slate for my ink colors. 
and I've just taken blocks. I've already got ink on these, but I just took some blocks and I added the ink to them. When you go to clean these off, all you have to do is rinse them under the sink. They will come completely clean. You don't have to scrub them or anything. Just rinse them off and they, they clean right up. I want to get these ink pads out of the way so I don't end up with a disaster here. Okay, I'm bringing in my Wink of Stella brush here. You always want to shake it up, and if you don't get um, a good glimmer coming out of the Wink of Stella, you can squeeze the barrel. There's push, little push um, images on the sides. You just squeeze it, and you'll see the ink come down into the barrel. So first of all, I'm going to start with my blueberry. And this is a really intense color. And yes, we are coloring with the Wink of Stella. So I'm just going to wipe off some of my color here so I have a little bit lighter blue. And then I'm going to come in and color my hummingbird. And I love how the hummingbirds are sectioned off so you can color different areas of them. I'm just going to keep blending to get rid of those brush strokes. I'm going to do a little bit down here on the hummingbird's belly. Then I'm going to come in with a little bit stronger color to do this part of the tail. And I will pick this up in just a second and show you how absolutely beautiful this is using the Wink of Stella. I'm going to wipe off a little bit of my color and I'm going to come in and do this little stripe right here. Okay, I wanna make sure, oh, let's make this just a little bit darker here. There we go. I hope you can see the Wink of Stella on here. Is that showing up in the camera? Cause it is so, so pretty. I'm gonna just grab a little more color, take a lot of my color off. I don't want this to be too dark. and bring it in here on the tail feathers. And notice that I'm not going all the way to the end here. I want them to kind of graduate to be much lighter. So I'm gonna wipe off my color, and now I'm gonna come in, and I'm gonna pull some of that color down. And you can do this because this is watercolor paper. Lots of fun things happening with watercolor paper. I'm giving it the glimmer that it needs there without all the color. Okay, we're gonna set that aside. Now I'm gonna come in with the Pineapple Punch, and this is just a really bright yellow color. And I'm gonna add this to the edges of some of the little elements. Now this may not look too great right now, but just give me a moment and I'll show you how this blends together so nicely. Now I'm going to bring in a little bit of this blue. I don't want too much. And then we're going to come in here and add green. So I'm just leaving a tiny little strip of that yellow. That's really going to make this hummingbird pop. Grab just a little bit more blue. Wipe it off to dissipate. I, I hope that's the right word I'm using. I like to I say that a lot, but I'm like, I don't know if that really makes sense. You guys understand what I mean, right? And here comes some green, because we know that yellow and blue makes green. I think I want to make just a little bit more green here. There we go. Okay. I'm going to wipe off my color, and now I'm going to bring in my smoky slate. And again, I don't want this to be as dark straight from the block with the ink, so I kind of wipe it off a little bit. And then I'm going to come in here and just add some of this gray to my hummingbird. Wipe off the gray, and now we can just 
blend a little bit of it down into these other parts. What do you guys think? Isn't that pretty? You saw how easy that was, right? I love the shading that's in there on those wings and also where the green and the yellow or the yellow and the blue meet to make the green. Okay, next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to, I've already got a block that's been dipped in Poppy Parade and I'm just going to take some of that and add it to my beak. So I don't know if you have hummingbirds where you are. We don't have many here, but my mother has hummingbirds like crazy. Like she'll have 14, 15 of them all over her hummingbird feeders and they're just so delightful to watch. Really fun. Okay, so that's how I made the hummingbird. Now I'm gonna show you how I colored in the flower because I have two cards to show you. I'm going to bring in Mango Melody. This is Mango Melody and Poppy Parade. All right, so I'm gonna use my darker color and I'm just gonna come in here and go around the outside edges of my flower. This is gonna give me some shading or sh darker, uh, yeah, shading, I guess that's what you'd call it. Can you guys tell that I'm not really an artist? <laughs> I don't know all the artsy fartsy terms, but I can tell you that when you have the proper tools, you don't have to be an artist to make beautiful things, right? And that's why I love my company. I love Stampin' Up. They give me high quality tools that can make me be successful at something that I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I, I suppose some people would call me an artist, a paper craft artist, maybe. But I can honestly tell you that anybody can do this. Like anybody. All I'm doing is outlining my flower right now. And now I'm gonna go back on these lines that are here. Those should be some definite shading lines. And again, Stampin' Up! gives us the artwork. We just have to follow the line to be successful. Okay, that looks good. Now I'm gonna wipe off my color. And again, I hope you can see the shimmer on that flower because it's really, really pretty. Now I'm gonna bring in, I'm gonna add a little bit more Wink Estella down here into my barrel. You can see it just filled up my barrel. I'm gonna grab some of this Mango Melody, rub a little bit off. I'm gonna come in on the stamen in my flower. I think that's what this is called. I know every time I do one of these, I always ask, what is that thing called? <laughs> yeah, yay on Kelly's terrible memory. Okay, wiping off some of the color. I don't want this to be too bright. I'm just gonna bring this in. I think I might need to grab some Calypso Coral here, yeah, because this Mango Melody is kind of a little more yellow than what I wanted to use. Just gonna grab another block here. Here comes Calypso. See what I've got going on here? I don't want this to be too dark. There we go, that's a little bit more the color I was looking for. Come in here. Now this is turning out a lot different than the other flower uh, that I made. And the reason is the other flower that I made, I used my aqua painter. And that gives me a little bit more water, I think. I'll show you both, so don't worry. We'll We'll compare and see which one you like better. I think I'm going to come in with a little bit more of the mango. Lighten this up a little bit. There we go. That's looking good. Oh, yeah. So you just kind of keep messing around. And we can do this with watercolor paper. You can't do this on regular Whisper White cardstock because you know it'll get all pilly. You can do it a little bit, but you can't keep rubbing like this. So don't get me wrong. You can use 
Whisper White for watercolor techniques, but you can't keep rubbing like this. That's why watercolor paper is so cool. Oh my gosh, this is turning out so pretty. I really do like it. Okay, now what are we gonna do with this? You see that glitz? Holy cow. Uh, let me close this up. Here they are. <laughs> like, where did my dies go? Okay, so I'm going to cut out this flower. I'm going to cut out this hummingbird. I'll be right back. Here we go. What do you guys think? Aren't those pretty? I love this. I just want the flower. I don't need the rest of this. So I'm just gonna cut this little stem part off. And I'm gonna need to make it a little bit closer because my die slid and that's really easy to do if you have that happen to you. See how I've got so much white here? Yeah, okay. Now, do you remember the backgrounds? I did this watercolor drip background. This is from my um, video on Friday for my online class using the piece of cake bundle. So you can go to my blog and check that out if you haven't seen that yet. But here's a watercolor drip background on watercolor paper. And then from the previous Wednesday, I did a whole bunch of cards using that watercolor drip. And you can see that they turn out different every time. Well, I had more left that I made. So I had this one and this one yet that I haven't done anything with. And I thought, oh, maybe I can use this for my Spring is in the Air blog hop. And sure enough, that's exactly what we're gonna do. So I'm going to bring in this layer of watercolor paper. And I think this is, let me tell you the dimensions. I don't remember, I didn't write them down. This is five and a quarter by four. And then I've got a black layer here that is just an eighth of an inch bigger. So we're gonna add this to our black layer. Now, if you missed that video on Wednesday for this watercolor drip technique, I will put a link for it in the description under the video. So if you're on YouTube watching this, go right under my video and you're gonna see a description. Click on that see more or whatever it says and you will be able to find a link directly to the watercolor drip technique. Okay, and then I'm gonna make this a tall card. So I've got four and a quarter by five, no, four and a quarter by 11 scored at five and a half here. We're just gonna burnish that edge good. This is going to go right on here. And that is Whisper White Thick Card Stock. I always like to use the thick for my card base because it just gives it that sturdiness that it needs. Let me make sure, oh, I just moved that and got it crooked. I love the glue, liquid glue. You can get this in my store right here. Um, I love the glue because you've got that wiggle room that lets you slide it around a little bit. And then I took the thank you and stamped that. I'm gonna use this beautiful little frame die to die cut this and I'll be right back. Here comes our thank you. And then also in here is this, I don't know what you call this, this funky little pattern. And when you use this on here, this is what's left over and this is what you get cut out. Oh look, I've got ink all over, there's a shocker. So that's what you get cut out. So I'm gonna use that 
part and I think I'm just gonna put it on my card something like this get my glue out again I'm just gonna put some little dots of glue on here you don't need to get crazy everything doesn't need to get glued down it's not going any place this would be a good one to use with your um, adhesive self-adhesive sheet so you have a sticker <laughs> That would have been brilliant, but yeah, I didn't think of that at the time. Whoops. Whoops. Be careful with this little bugger. There we go. I've got a little bit of glue on my fingers. It's kind of sticking to me. Get those fingers wiped off so I'm not sticking to everything. I hate that. Okay. Then I think what I'm going to do is come in here with the thank you. And if you wanted to, instead of making this a thank you card, there's a beautiful image in the stamp set wishing you an amazing birthday and also the hope you feel better really soon. So this is a great stamp set. The greetings are pretty. I'm gonna take some dimensionals. add it to the back of my flower and pop that up. Okay, here's our beautiful little flower. Mm. Yep, I like this better. I like it better right up here. Okay, you guys, what do you think? Is that summary? Is it pretty? I was wondering if the background kind of took over a little too much, but I think I really like it. Okay, one more thing I want to do here is this leaf image also comes in here. And since I've used orange and black, I'm just going to stamp this in black. And I'm going to just stamp it kind of in this corner here. You think I, oh, I don't, do you see that I kind of screwed that up? <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, it is what it is. If this was clear, I'd stamp it again, but it's not, and I won't. All right, so there's one card. And then what did I do with my hummingbird? Well, let me show you. I cut, die cut a black layer. So this is my watercolor layer with all the shimmer on it. I die cut this black layer and I offset it just a little bit like that. So you can just see a little bit of black coming out behind it. And this is the card that I came up with for that. And I see that I was telling myself that I was not going to forget to put my rhinestones on, but I did anyways. I want some rhinestones on this card because why wouldn't you? Like there's absolutely no good reason why you wouldn't add some rhinestones to this beautiful card. And let's grab one of these little itty bitties. Doesn't it just look pretty? You could even put more on there. Okay, so we've got our watercolor drip background that I did last Wednesday. And now we've done a technique with Wink of Stella and watercolor paper and ink on blocks. So that's a whole bunch of tips in there, right? If you would like to get your hands on this Humming Along stamp set and the Hummingbird framelits, you can head right over to my blog. There's a button in the right-hand column to go to my store. It's an online ordering button. You can go right to my store and order any of these products that I've just shown you. You can get watercolor paper. You can get rhinestones. You can get Wink of Stella. You can get the stamp set and the framelits. Don't forget, when you order them both, there's one code for that, and you get a 10% discount. I always love for everybody to get discounts. The Take Your Pick tool is great for picking up those little embellishments that can be a real pain sometimes if you don't have a good tool to do that. Let me know if you have any questions about this technique. And leave a comment under the YouTube video or on my blog telling me which one do you like better, the hummingbird or the flower card? I always like to hear your opinions. When you place your order, if it's under $150, please use that host code.
That'll give you some special perks with me. If it's over $150, do not use the host code because you'll get your own rewards from Stampin' Up. There's going to be a link on YouTube underneath the video that'll take you directly to this blog host so you can continue on the blog hop with the creative inking demonstrators. I think you're going to find some really beautiful projects there. And before I forget, this bundle is one from our Occasions Mini Catalog. It is not carrying over into the new catalog, so it is going to be retiring. There are some amazing cards out there online. Tons and tons of ideas with this. I think it's just so pretty and perfect for spring is in the air theme, right? All right, you guys, you have yourselves a wonderful weekend. Have a blessed Easter. I hope you get to spend it with family and friends. And once again, thank you so much for taking a little bit of time out of your day to spend it with me. Bye-bye.